So I decided I should probably do a little winter maintenance on my 91, 92 Yamaha FZR. Um, mechanically, everything's working pretty darn good so far, still. I actually wanted to do as little of this thing as possible because I spent so much time on the other bikes. But something was concerning me, and that is the intake boots inside of it. I can see it. They are starting to form some cracks. They're kind of way up in there. And if they crack all the way through, they'll start pulling more air through, and this thing just won't run correctly. So. Unfortunately, I think I gotta get way in there to replace these. And I actually bought these online um, from like an AliExpress type thing. And I'll be honest, these feel the exact same as the OEM ones that I put on to the Bandit. And I got these for 10 bucks a piece as opposed to paying 40 bucks a piece from a parts shop like a Bike Bandit or something like that. So I think those are gonna work just fine. They come with the O-rings and everything. So I think that's gonna work out. But we have to take off the uh, tank, this, well, it's tank cover, that's not a tank. There's actually a tank hidden inside of there. It's a four gallon tank with a fuel pump on the bottom of it. That whole assembly will come off. We gotta disengage this blue wire, which I labeled, so I remember how to do that. And then the whole thing will lift out. And then the carburetor rack will come out. There's a couple other things I'm seeing on here. And I mean, it's probably due for a valve adjustment, but I'm just not gonna do it. <laughs> I'm just not. I think the bike's got about 30,000 miles on it. I'm not exactly sure because I had to replace the tachometer because the old one didn't work. So I think it was at like 22,000. I probably put, I bet it's at like 32,000 miles on the bike. If it hasn't needed the valves yet, I'm going to say it doesn't need them. Or I'm just going to run it until it blows up because I don't think this bike is worth more than $500 at this point. And the hassle of me going and trying to sell it doesn't really outweigh the happiness that it gives me when I ride it like 15 times a year. So I'm gonna do the minimum amount I can to still say stay safe on the thing. Safe-ish, I suppose. But uh, I don't wanna do the valves. If they were lock nut valves, I would do them. But because they're bucket and shim, or I think they're bucket and shim, I'm not gonna do them. The other, the other thing I'd like to address but just taking off this whole front fairing is such a pain in the balls is that this headlight that I put in here, I could see it's rattling around and I can hear that. And I don't know if it's gonna wear, it's an LED bulb. I don't know if it's just gonna wear that thing out and eventually just break it. So I probably should tend to that. We'll see how ambitious I get. So I think it's gonna be a video about, oh, uh, well, we gotta pull the entire carburetor rack off to get in there and actually replace the intake boots. So. I don't suspect that I have any issues with the carburetor. Bike runs perfectly awesome. But since I'm going to go in that far, I might as well pull up pilots and whatnot, blow it out, and get everything tip top shape. Maybe you can discover a couple errors in it, or errors, but just issues with it and get it running even better. Fork seals are all fine. Did those already. And uh, aesthetically, it looks like a piece of shit. Actually, the camera does it a lot of justice. In person, it looks <laughs> a hell of a lot worse. You've got new tires. Um, all right. Yep, let's so try the tank cover off right now, and then I just put the screws back in here to keep these holes tight. This is actually on like a bit of a pivot, and there's a brace here to keep it from pivoting. I loosened up these four clamps here, just with the JIS screwdriver, or you could use a Phillips on that. So then the airbox will pop off, and then there's just a hose clamp here. Ooh, I think I got it loose. Will. All right, there it is. So that'll come right off, and then we can see the carburetors. It's kind of weird how those things are mounted. I mean, look at that. Uh, totally different. Like the bowls are pretty much 90 degrees to what you would expect this carburetor to look like. It's actually really cool, especially when you're running this thing. Uh, if you just run it without the air filter on, just seeing this configuration is really neat. I think at the time this was pretty revolutionary, the, the delta box with the way that they rotated this engine inside of here. And the carburetor rack, I don't know, I just think it's pretty neat. Loosened up this 10 millimeter pivot bolt, which I believe is like three millimeters too short. And I actually want to get a longer one, I forgot about that. It, I have to put a ton of pressure on it to get it to grab the threads on the other side. And that's something I actually wanted to do. Yeah, the reason it was so hard to pull this tank up, it's it's loose and floating now. The reason it was so hard to pull it up is because I have these two tabs pinched in so hard because I mentioned that bolt was 
just like barely long enough. Um, but we do have to disconnect the fuel line to get it off there. And usually I disconnect it down here. We need the red one disconnected. And I think I could still probably do that, whatever's in the fuel line. Though I did run it out. There, how about that? All right, I should be able to pull this thing up and out now. It was a little bit of acrobatics. There it is. Okay, where is the pump? There's the pump. So can, I'll have to find a spot where I can leave this. You got your fuel filter on the bottom there. Fuel pump here. This is where it pumps up and into the carburetor rack. And now I gotta find a nice place where this can sit. Maybe I can, I don't wanna put too much pressure on any of those lines. I'll probably be replacing some of them, but uh, I'll figure that out. Then we'll get back in there. You can see how nice of a big area we have in here now that we removed the fuel tank. Something I've been meaning to buy and I keep fucking forgetting is to buy extra breather hose like this. Cause this, this electrical tape here, this was not me. And this thing should be replaced. And maybe I'll, I'll write that down that I should buy some more breather hose and actually replace that. Um, it's an interesting story. I mean, when I got this bike, I bought it from a kid. Uh, he'd actually had it in his like uh, high school autos class and they went through it before. So maybe they did do the valves on it at that point. It was funny, the first time I changed the oil, I found a bunch of rocks in it. Like literally there are rocks in it. So might not have been a kid with a bunch of friends or at least one enemy, um, but it just keeps on, keeps on keeping on. So I'm gonna take this brace off now and I'm, I don't even want to take this hose off because then I guarantee myself I have to buy some. So now I got the brace out of the way. We can actually see what I'm worried about here. Should be able to see those cracks now. That is an impending issue that needs to be tended to. For all I know, it's already pulling air through it. Those are what I want to replace. Those are bad and that's only a matter of time till it uh, results in a pretty bad day. I've just been winging it to this point, but I decided I should probably consult handy dandy manual to make sure I understand what's happening. And uh, so far I've been doing it correctly. And what I, I was thinking is that because of the situation of this carburetor, it's basically just gravity held onto the intake boots themselves. And it's held on there by a similar set of clamps that we did to take the air box off of here. And on this bike, at least on this bike, I'm not 100% certain this is stock, but they are three millimeter Allens. So what we do is get in there, crack all these things loose, and actually loosen them up pretty good. But there, so that's one of them. So I'm gonna go around, get all four of those loose, and we'll see that we should be able to actually pop the carburetor rack up probably gonna have to move this clutch cable out of the way. Wow, that's gonna be, whew, that's tucked in there. I don't, it didn't say anything about removing the clutch cable, but we need to loosen this assembly so that we're able to then come in here and get the throttle cable off. So the throttle cable's got this action. This one here on the top, there's usually an easy one and a hard one. This one's gonna be real easy right here. We'll just loosen the lock nut on on the throttle cable and we'll be able to pull that one out but number two down there wow why is that pin so far out is that oh, that's not even the pin oh, that one's gonna be a bear that one's gonna suck so that's why this thing's got to get loosened and come out so we're gonna pop that bad boy loose and keep going so i've got all of the boots loose and then i just loosened the throttle cable up a bit here i want to see if i can pop this thing up the only th I'm worried about that clutch cable being in the way but I should be able to pull it out oh there it is and now we should be able to push it with our finger can I actually do this on camera real quick and easy I bet I can I feel it I'm feeling lucky That's one for you, Wild Bill. All right, the second one's gonna be the hard one. But actually, 
We've got a whole lot of movement here. What am I being held on by? What is holding it? There's this cable here, but that is... Oh, it's the choke. How do we deal with the choke? Did I miss something? We gotta deal with the choke somehow. So right in there, I'm shining a light on it. That's the choke clamp screw. You need to loosen that. And then in the same way, there's one of those throttle cable. I don't know what they're called, little nubs on the end. We're gonna pull that out. I got my handy dandy pick to do so. I'm gonna get that thing out. Oh, there it is. All right, well, I might get it out, but I don't know how I'm gonna get it back in. I think, there we go. Okay, so that one's out. Last one to do is, where is it? Is there, it's this one. Okay, so, okay. And that one's out. All right, well, we got a carburetor rack out. Oh, it's so much easier to pull a carburetor rack out than it is to put it in. And that one was so much harder to pull out than the bandit that I am fretting the next step. But here they are, the cracked up intake boots. These are what we're gonna be replacing. This is why I'm in here. So let's pull these bad boys off. Son of a bitch, I just knew I was gonna end up getting in deeper than I wanted to. So these are the intake boots and they take a five millimeter crack them loose. The issue is these coolant lines and these are the metal pieces, these are hose there. There is not enough clearance. And I've tried with a couple different five millimeter Allen bits and there's no way to get these things off without moving these coolant lines. The problem with that is this entire thing up to the top, you can see I spilled some, uh, it's all the way up to the top, is full of coolant. <clears throat> so I have to drain it at least to down here. If I get all the way to down there, that's the bottom of the radiator. I'm essentially pouring all the coolant out. So the way that the coolant's gonna come out is, I believe, on the pump here, not this, but this. This is a drain. There's a washer under there. A washer, kind of like a crushed gasket thing. I'm gonna drain most of it from there. There's also, under the exhaust, uh, not under, yeah, right there. If you can see it, it, that looks like a 10 millimeter hex there with a Phillips in the middle. Take it off with the hex, drain it from there. I'll just do a full coolant swap on this. This is the green stuff, the ethylene glycol. Drain it into there, and then I remembered that a year or two ago, uh, this hose is bad here. This radiator hose, you can see it's it's tearing a bit, and I've I've squished it up a bunch further, and I meant to replace this, but I hadn't yet. So I bought a kit to replace all the hoses, and the one hose I didn't get is the one I actually need. But I have all of these hoses: one, two three and then there's another straight one in here and I think I just cut it to this length and if I'm in this far I'm never ever going to do these hoses I might as well just do those hoses right fuck I just can't fucking do an easy project so there's a very real chance that this part is going to get messy but I get to break in one of my Harbor Freight little three eighths to quarter inch extensions so I'm going to loosen up this drain here and I expect a big old pea stream because so there's a lot of fluid above. When is it gonna come? When is it gonna come? There it is. I see it. It's green. That is not oh I need to take the radiator cap off. I didn't do that yet. That'll make this come faster. There it is. <laughs> and there it comes. Of course, as soon as I turn the camera off, I pull the radiator cap off all the way and <laughs> shoot the shit all over the place. That's just kind of how it goes. All right, I'm curious about, because I've never actually loosened one of these before. What comes out of here? It must just be because fluid gets caught further up. 
That is my guess. I could have grabbed a longer extension, but I didn't. What are we going to see coming out? We can have a mess. Oh, there's a lot in there. And there's one of these on each side, so... Wow, there's a lot more fluid in there than I would have expected. So yeah, I guess do both sides. Now I'm at the part where I can take this line off. I've removed the five millimeter Allen, and this this will pop right up. And this line, oh my God, I just dropped it. There it is, oh shit. I'm gonna be able to, there. Come on, really? <laughs> I see it, it's right there. Anyway, I'm gonna be replacing that because I have a, an O-ring set that I bought on Amazon. It's this size. Yeah, since I'm in here, I might as well replace it, but just go figure. You drop the damn thing. Anyway, if you see, now I can move this out of the way and I can come in and with the five millimeter, I should be able to loosen off both of the two bolts that are securing the uh, intake boot. And these intake boots, it's worth noting, they are asymmetrical. The, uh, there's rights and there's lefts. I don't think all four are different, but the rights are different and the lefts are different. Okay, so both bolts are out. And now, there it is. Let's take a look at this thing. Holy shit. This thing was going, ah, the inside looks all right. I mean, it wasn't leaking air yet. I also don't know what this thing's for. I don't, I don't know. But the outside was clearly going. This is a new one. This is the old one. Yeah, this is the right, it looks like it should be the right diameter. And that's why we're going in and replacing them. Cause that is a no bueno. So what do we think? Replace one of these hoses? I think that'll be right. We'll see, I think it'll work. Here are the old air boots, and here's the new ones that have to go in. You can see these were going to have a rough go at it. Granted, it does look like there's like an insert on the inside of these, where it really doesn't matter too much how badly the outside's going. So it wasn't affecting anything yet, but I was worried because you see something that looks like that, and that that's cause for concern. So I'm going to get these other ones on. I'll show you. I've also I put that hose kit in. Um, one, two, and three. I didn't bother with this thing. I only see me. It only causes me more work, and this little piece is going to be fine. So put the four boots on, the two rights on this side, the two lefts on that side, new O-rings on the line here, the line here, and actually at that point we could actually start filling it back up with coolant. All right, so I think we ought to just take a look at the carburetor since it's off and it's sitting here. This is a really cool carburetor actually. And it's, it's noteworthy to remember that it actually sits on the bike like this. It's oriented like that. Intake right here, and then it passes through and goes into the cylinder on the bottom. But it's oriented like this. So I'm just turning it a bit and standing it. I took one side off. And as, as normal, these JIS screws, and they're JIS, they're stamped with that little dot and JIS screwdriver will fit right in there. He usually gets them off, but these things are always made of cheese. And there's one I couldn't get off without fighting it with a vise. Luckily, I always, I just buy these things on Amazon just so I have spares, so it doesn't halt the whole job. So at least I've got another one to put on there. Um, I'm gonna take this, they come off in pairs, uh, the, the bowls, and I had run this bike dry at the end of the year and it was interesting because I still thought there'd be a little bit of fuel inside of it because I didn't run them that I didn't run them dry not too long ago maybe two weeks so I figured there'd still be something out but they're pretty close to bone dry and I don't have a carburetor kit because there's nothing actually wrong with it so I don't want to ruin the gaskets again the gaskets on the bottom this one's rough but I don't have one so I don't want to damage them anymore so I can reuse them. This should come right off. And yeah, not great on that one either. 
but you can see the inside of the carburetors look really good, like super good. Um, I think what I'm going to do is just shoot some carb cleaner into each of these, and I've been I'm reading, reading about this, it's interesting. So there is the main jet, it mentions a plug and a pilot jet, and I'm not seeing a plug, and it also mentions a starter jet. So C here, C is do not remove the plug C. That would be this that they're talking about. I don't know why you don't remove that, nor the pilot jet. They don't even tell you what the pilot jet is. They say it's that little thing, and I'm, I'm not buying that. <laughs> um, but what, one thing that is noteworthy is that we've got the air fuel mixture screws here. And I was curious about where they're set because it is an aftermarket exhaust. It's a Vance and Hines exhaust on here. And I was curious about what the actual jets were inside of here. And I tested these two. This was two and about four fifths. This was about two and a quarter. And what I'm doing is I'm just going to put it all the way in and then bring it back out. I want to leave this how it is. I probably actually want to get these the same. I want to get the air fuel the same, but I want to get an idea of where they are. So what I'm going to do is seat it. So I'm going to go clockwise, half turn, one, one and a half, two, that's two and a half, holy shit, three, <laughs> that was three and a quarter, uh, okay, that's not right, but five so wow those were quite out from each other uh you want those to be the same so maybe we can actually get a, a better idle and a zero to 25 percent on this um because i'm not going to be going through and, and doing a whole carburetor rebuild i'm really not going to be pulling too much out i think i'll pull out the jets here and what do we got where is it i'm gonna shoot some carburetor cleaner through there and I'm going to get high on some duster, and then after that, I'm going to shoot it through the carburetor as well, just in case there's any little specks of dust. It can't hurt because we're in this far, but I'm not going in and replacing everything because I don't have the O-rings and gaskets set and jet set and everything. So, I don't know. This should, this should be all right. Sprayed some carb cleaner and compressed air through all the jets and the passages. Everything looks good. And then it got to thinking, what should the air fuel mixture screws be set out to and manual says pilot screw set out to three turns <laughs> and I had just set them all to two and a half so I'm actually just gonna go to set them all to three turns um, I would have assumed with a more free-flowing exhaust I probably want a richer mixture because there's probably more air going through it so three turns out that's where all these are going to then I got confused because the main jet and the starter jet both screw into the same threads and I didn't take a picture before I started doing this. <coughs> so I didn't know where they went. I actually just chipped a piece of the starter jet. Anyway, the main jet's a 107.5, and it goes on the bottom. It's actually got a little darker hue to it. That one's the main, that one's the starter, and the starter is a 52.5. And, and I always separate them. This is going back into carb three, this is going back into carb two, this is going back into carb one. I always just put them back into the same ones. So I'm going to get all those set and then set all these to three, put my bowls back on, and then the carburetor's going back in the bike, and that's going to be the worst part of this whole process because uh, I don't know how I'm going to get that choke cable in. Now at the part where I need to re-cable the throttle and the throttle return and the choke. What a pain in the nutsack that was. But I do have all the cables now, and the throttle's moving, and the choke slides in and out. I had to take the choke piece off and basically with a magnet place it and move it all around. That choke cable on this bike is a bitch and a half. I'm guessing there's a trick to it. Somebody might know it better and if you do it a bunch of times you probably figure it out. But hopefully this is the last time I take this carb rack out. We'll just keep it clean so I don't have to do that again. So now I gotta seat this thing in the boots. And hopefully I got those lined up right. So I should be able to move it there. Yeah, that's the spot. I'm going to push it down. Uh, let's 
see, can I do that? Should be able to push it down and then I can tighten up my throttle cables to where I want them. I've got the rack situated in the boots and now that's what's left is to clamp down each of the intake boots. One thing I don't particularly care for is that throttle on, look how slow that return is. It was slow before though, and if I really wanted to take care of it, I could have taken these cables off and lubricated them, but I wish it was quicker. Granted, in practice, this isn't actually really going to affect anything because my hand's going to be on it all the time, but if I just like, walk past the bike and I don't know, you'd want a quicker return, but because this is a piece of shit bike and this is still going to work, um, I'm comfortable with that. Good enough. Okay, let's try this again. Alrighty. That works better. Okay. So we. What are we hitting? Oh, right, because the battery box is a biatch. Okay. Right there. Yeah, we'll get that pushed in. Oh, I've got those real in there. Okay, so now there's a reason for that. It's because that pivot pin is not quite long enough. I don't believe. The next day I decided to sleep on it and go shopping today, grab a couple things. The big one being that this pivot pin just isn't long enough. I don't feel comfortable with the fact that this gas tank could be on here, not fully secured. If I crash or something and I got a loose gas tank rolling around and then I light on fire and I die because I didn't buy a $2 piece, uh, that would be a really stupid look at my funeral. So unfortunately I could only find uh, one of these M6 80 millimeters with a Phillips head on it, but I figure I'll just use some some thread locker on it and that's going to be better than what I had previously. I'm going to feel more comfortable doing that. Uh, I bought a cheapy little uh, oil filter, but replace it. I, I mean, I change the oil and I replace the filter every year. So even if it's not a great one, I don't put a ton of miles on it. So I'm, I figure replacing it is going to be better than, than not doing so. Uh, some Rotella T, I think actually these are actually the same thing. I think T4 replaced the Rotella T, but I always used use T4. I didn't even notice that I got two different kinds. I'm almost positive these are the exact same. And then lastly, I grabbed a uh, AutoZone didn't have, in it, they didn't let you buy bulk hose, but um, this was the one that I know is ripped on the bottom. And I found a piece, a formed piece, that looked like it was gonna have a long enough section here. I told myself 23 inches and being conservative, and it looks like this is gonna work just fine. Seven eighths inner, di seven eighths inch inner diameter. So I'll get that cut and I'll get that replaced. And then that's one more thing I don't have to worry about. So uh, the reason I wanted to do an oil change is because I'd actually wouldn't mind running the bike and but well first I want to make sure that all the uh, coolant hoses that I get on there are all correct and I'm not leaking anywhere and then secondly I want to drain the oil put new oil in it because I actually have the full fairing kit for this bike but I haven't had it on since the first year that I owned it uh, just because I was always going inside of the thing and just messing with it that I just always kept it off because it was a pain in the butt to take on and off but I'm kind of curious what it looks like I forgot what it looks like with the full kit on so I'm gonna do the hose first, then I'm gonna do the pivot pin and we'll keep rolling the old hose off and you can actually see the tear and this thing ended up spitting a whole bunch of fluid on my driveway once. One thing I'm noticing that I'm not thrilled about is that it looks like the hose I got is a slightly smaller diameter. Granted, this thing's flared out a bit, about 22.37. Yeah, if I look at this side, you can see it's a little bit flared, but we can get an idea. That says 21. Well, I was checking, let's call this one 22. Uh, the ones that I put on were 20, and then this bigger one that I'm looking to replace it with, it's roughly 19 to 9, so let's call it 22 and 19. The reason I'm worried about that is if you take a look at this calculator, let's say I put in a bore diameter of 22 millimeters at, I don't know what the pressure is inside of it, but let's just call it 2 bar, 2 bar would be 2 atmosphere, I, I don't know what the actual thing's running at, and I like the 0.5 meters, we see we got 140, um, actually the units aren't that important. What is it? Liters per minute. So if I drop that 22 down to 19, 
I dropped from 140 down to 95, and I've, I've restricted the flow rate pretty substantially by bringing this thing over here. So this, I, I've checked, it fits onto here, it fits onto there just fine. And actually I measured the inside of this and the inner diameter here is actually 18 millimeters. So the hose is still bigger. My worry is just about how much restriction and pressure am I adding to the system and am I overworking the pump if I do that? I don't, I don't like doing this, but so much of the rest of it is inner diameter and the only part I'm adding a little, I'm adding pressure from here to here. The thing is all the fluid is running through here, whereas it's got splits in these other areas. Granted, this is a straight run, really no bends or anything, just a curve. Uh, but that's, that's my fear. I'm still gonna put it on. I'm gonna put it on and try that out. But my worry is that I'm, I'm adding extra pressure to the system that may not have uh, been intended to be there. Then again, this may not be OEM. Maybe it was supposed to be this because this actually closer matches the diameter of what I would assume the, the radiator is actually set for. So I'm gonna put this on regardless. I'll get my tube cutter, not really tube, but my line cutter, cutter right there, exact same, and put this on with the existing hose clamps. So I've got the new hose installed. It looks good, should work all right. I mean, outside of that worry about, uh, there's a little bit of flex in there. That may not be cool. This looks like something I'm probably going to end up replacing sometime in the future. The other thing is I did get this pivot bolt all the way through. And the important part is you can see it's threaded all the way through to the other side. So now I know that that thing's not going to be, it's not going to be coming off. And that was, that was my big worry. So now we can, actually we're pretty close to being able to get this running. Just got to get some coolant in it. So I moved the party outside. I removed the... Uh, rear body work so that I'd be able to see the overflow valve better or overflow tank better and I'm probably going to get at that anyway so it made sense to pull it off. Um, <coughs> got everything buttoned back up I think we're about to find out. What I need to do now is get it full of coolant again and fill through the uh, filler cap here. It's, it's interesting because there's not actually a filler cap on the radiator itself. Uh, the filler is all the way up here and then the coolant overflow is to there and those levels should ideally end up matching. I can't find any markings on the overflow where the overflow should be actually filled to. It just says fill to correct level. Yeah, go fuck yourself. Um, I think I do this correctly because uh, it's always worked for me. I've never had overheating issues. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to unbutton this here. We're going to fill through there with a funnel. And I wasn't sure how much it was going to take and I didn't know if I had enough. Actually, I thought this was full strength, but it's 50-50. I've got 2100 milliliters measured out. I don't have much left in there. Unfortunately, it says I need 2,200 milliliters, but if I didn't get a full flush out of it, there's probably still some sitting in the system. So what I gotta do is uh, refill at the radiator where I pulled that cap off, uh, use 50-50, and then fill to the radiator filler neck just below the reservoir tank opening. We'll do that. Then we rock the bike all over, squish the lines, whatnot, try to get all the air bubbles out. Start the engine and let it idle. And you actually do that with the filler cap off. So let it idle until we get up to normal operating temperature. Um, that's always been subjective to me. I don't know when exactly how long I should run it for. I'll probably go low on that. Um, but basically, as this thing vibrates and whatnot, and as it's moving around, it, the bubbles should all come to the top and you want the cap off so that the bubbles can escape from the system. And after that, well, we're gonna get it as high as we possibly can and then install the radiator cap and it should be good. I can't go for a test ride or anything. And it says to also fill up the overflow, which I don't know where it's actually supposed to be filled to. So I'm just gonna be filling up. Uh, it's a long process usually to get it all in there, but I'm going to be trying to get those 2200 or the 2100 milliliters that I have into the cooling system. And then uh, we'll start rocking it all around. Oh yeah, it's gonna be a while. You can't put too much in too fast because it takes a while to get into it. Actually, I'm already getting caught up. So yeah, uh, it's gonna be a little bit of a fight, but I'm gonna get it all in there. A little trick that I'm learning. When you're putting this in, it's gonna back up because of air. You see how we're caught up on the top? If you just come down and reach and grab this hose and just squeeze it, it'll burp it through the system. And then you can actually add the coolant quicker that way. 
Oops. Of course I do that because I'm trying to rush it now that I'm filming myself. All right, I gotta shut it off so I stop. I just did one of the dumbest things I've done in a while. Um, so you can see we're up to the top and I know I'm nowhere near because I still got a whole bunch I need to get in there. So what I wanted to do was actually just turn the motor over a couple times and see if that helped it. However, I forgot to attach the fuel line to the pump when I saw fuel start pouring all over the place. I figured I set the floats wrong or something. No, you have to attach the fuel line to the fuel pump or that's gonna happen. Don't be an idiot like me. Get it to go any lower. Uh, I mean, no matter what I did, no matter how much squeezing I did or anything, it wasn't going any lower. So I knew I still got like 600 milliliters I have to get into it to get up to that 2200. So what I did, I took it off the center stand. And if you just go nuts on the thing, and just go like nuts on the thing. And then come around and start squeezing hoses and all that other stuff. It'll keep dropping down because there's still a whole lot more in there. Air bubbles will keep it from happening. So it's it's worth noting, if you th even if you think you're all the way to the top and you're squeezing this one, it's still not going down. If you knew you drained it all, um, there's likely an air bubble. You get in there and just start just shaking the thing. So it's interesting, I've been at this a while and I cannot get any more in there than right here. And I've put in seven, 1400 and then 300 more. So I'm at 1700 milliliters that I've put in. And then I started wondering how much did that new hose put on, uh, how much did that decrease my capacity and if I estimate that it's a 20 inch hose um, I actually lost about 268 milliliters of capacity and that still doesn't get me to the 2200 milliliters that the manual said now there still could be a big air bubble in here somewhere that I just haven't been able to bust loose but I've also read on the internet a couple of people say that it should take about 1.95 liters of coolant so 1950 so if I got 1700 milliliters in here now and I took out 268 milliliters of total capacity from 1950 take off roughly 250 you're at 1700 that might be what i have in it now so i'm going to start it i don't expect this to go well so you wouldn't have heard me start it because my piece of shit gopro decided to freeze as soon as i hit play but uh, i did get it started after a couple goes and we did make a carburetor change we changed the air fluid mixture screws out of it so what I'm doing now is I'm watching to see, all right, the choke is fully off now. I'm watching to see if any bubbles, actually, you may have just seen it. I did just get a bubble to come through. I'm watching to see if more bubbles are gonna work their way through while I warm this bike up. But I'm not seeing a whole bunch. But I'm gonna run it for a little while um, until it starts to heat up. And uh, we may have it full. I kind of doubt it. I, am, I expect that we'll get some big bubbles coming through and then we'll add some more coolant to it. But this, this is good news because I'm not seeing any leaks so far. And one of my big worries is that we're gonna have leaks all over the place. So if we feel comfortable that we get the fluid, the, the coolant all the way up, get the bike warm, I can put the radiator cap on, can heat it all up, drain the oil out, and I could be on my merry way. Actually, this fluid level is raised a bit. It's actually still it's still coming up. That's still coming up. I might need to stop this. I think that's what's gonna happen. So I'm gonna be leaving the bike to uh, idle for a while. What I wanna do is get it up to temperature for two reasons. One, I wanted to get it all the way up for the coolant system. Um, and I, I'm not gonna pull that thing off right away because that'll be dangerous. I do wanna see this thing start to rise up to operating temps. The other thing, is that I want to get the oil warm enough because while I'm at it, I might as well change the oil since I got to get the oil hot to bring it out anyway. Plus, I like confusing everybody out here. So she's been running now for a good uh, 12, 13 minutes at least. And we can see it's, it's up to temperature. It's where I want to be. And what I've been doing is just going around looking for leaks or anything. I'm not seeing any fuel leaks, coolant leaks, etc. I did make it a little harder on myself by spilling earlier, so I had to go and wipe all that kind of stuff. But I think I'm comfortable with where it's at now, what I'm gonna do. It's funny, I meant to shut off the bike and I shut off the camera. What I'm gonna do now is actually change the oil. Uh, I'm not gonna be touching that filler cap for a while. One thing I do have to do is make sure that the overflow is at the right volume. And I did figure out there are marks. Unfortunately, they're under here in the back. I understand why they do that. So you can check it without having to pull the fairings off. However, they really should have put uh, marks on uh, both sides. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do an oil change here. I don't know if I'm gonna actually start it again because I don't know how, if it's gonna totally cool down enough that I could pull that radiator cap off because those things are kind of scary. 
So I'm gonna do an oil change and then call this video a wrap. Actually, you don't really need to see me do the oil change. Oil change is pretty boring. Basically, I'm just gonna drain it out, 17 millimeter, pull off the drain bolt, pull off the oil filter, and uh, swap in some new Rotella T4. And that'll be it for this one. Um, I, yeah, I think I should just cut this video into two because this is enough for me this weekend. And then I'll get back to this uh, hopefully next weekend. And we'll finish it up and then it'll be ready for summer. Thanks for watching.